All right. Hello, YouTube. This is Minister Durahill. Uh, I want to talk about uh, should the gospel be sold? Nowadays, you see um, on uh, within the church and then also on t television on um, Christian programming where you know you have to actually purchase sermons. You have to buy a sermon. You have to buy the Word of God. And I think that this is something that we really uh, need to uh, talk about and address because when you don't deal with things in the beginning, um, it has a way of increasing and uh, pretty much it getting completely out of control um, and it's not like it would happen overnight it gradually happens um, one of the things that I will say is um, I wanted to go to a certain conference um, mega ministry if I said the name you know who exactly what I'm talking about but um, powerful person of God um, preach the word, uh, love to hear them minister the word of God, uh, no question. Um, but pretty much, uh, I, <laughs> I wanted to attend and uh, come to find out you had to register in order to attend this conference. And um, so you had to call the number to register. So, you know, I called the number to register um, to attend it and uh, they told me that in order to go, you had to pay the registration fee of $200. So I was like, $200? I mean, you know, that's a very steep amount. And, um, you know, to hear the word. So I'm like, okay, well, I guess, you know, they have different programs during the day, different training programs or workshops that I guess is the reason why they're charging that, which still is not an excuse. But anyway... Uh, so I was like, well, maybe I could just come to the evening services just to hear the um, the preacher preach or whoever is the speaker for that evening to a minister. And they were like, no, you have to pay in order to actually come to even the evening services. You had to pay that registration fee. So either you pay the registration fee or you couldn't go to any of the services at all. So I was like, wow. OK. Um, and this was several, uh, several times, uh, each time this conference, this particular conference came and really all the conferences that this uh, ministry has, uh, it's a charge, it's a fee. Um, then they also was doing like concerts where you had to purchase tickets to, to go to quote unquote, a gospel concert to see gospel artists, uh, perform. And, you know, it's just crazy and out of hand. Um, my personally, my personal opinion, um, the way that it's going, and it seems as if a lot of people are not checking this, but you have to start, you have to hit things in the beginning um, in order to really stop something. Because if you don't hit it in the beginning, it has a way of growing, and then all of a sudden, it's boom, you know, out of control in your face, and you people wonder, like, where did that come from? Well, it gradually happened. My personal opinion, I believe uh, down the line, maybe not in my lifetime or possibly so in my lifetime, I'm not sure. But it it seems to me that it's going to get to the point where these churches are going to start charging you to go to church. I'm serious. And now you may say, OK, well, no, I don't think they'll ever do that. But look at what look at where it's going now. OK, they're charging you to go to conferences, special events. They're charging you for sermons. Now, come on now, you know, charging you for the word of God. Now, think, do you think Jesus would ever charge you for one of his sermons or one of his messages? Absolutely not. Well, what's happening? What's happening is we're in the last day church era. Uh, that church that led to see a church and so really I think that uh, we really have to pay attention to this and one of the things that I really thank God for is the internet because yeah it's a lot of negative and bad things on the internet but God is also using the internet as well um, because there are a lot of uh, you know people ministering online preaching the gospel 
um, which is free. You can get the word uh, online, and it's uh, and I see God transitioning um, ministry. You know, this is a new era of ministry, being able to reach people, you know, all over the world um, online. And a lot of people are preaching the truth. There's a lot of people that are are ministering the word of God. Uh, the true word of God, and uh, I just thank God and give God the glory for this tool of ministry. But pretty much uh, the bottom line is it's just getting crazy. You know, you shouldn't have to charge uh, people for sermons. Um, nowadays, we have the technology now where you don't have, you know, the, you know, because a church may say, okay, well, you know, we have to, uh, you know, uh, sell the sermons to, um, you know, uh, for, for the ministry and say a big ministry is on TV. And so they say, OK, well, in order for us to, you know, make the bills for the television ministry, they feel as if they have to sell sermons. And I'm like, no, nah, I mean, number one, you know, if you have to get to the point of selling your sermons f to purchase television time, then maybe that means you shouldn't be on television. You know, this is the thing, you know, God doesn't see it. See, sometimes we think that, you know, OK, well, uh, we look at, OK, if you're just ministering to maybe two people and then you have the uh, option to minister to a thousand people and we kind of judge it as if preaching to the thousand is more significant than preaching to the two. God doesn't see it like that. He doesn't see it like that. A soul, one soul. It's precious unto the Lord. So if you have a, a mega ministry and, you know, uh, financially you don't have the money to, um, you know, be on television, then, you know, you don't have to be on television. You know, just just work with the body, uh, the, the, the people that you have in that congregation, um, do outreach programs, work in that community. Um if you really genuinely want to, you know, get the word out to people um, through media, use YouTube. You know, why don't they do that? You know, uh, um, allow your sermons to be available through podcasts where people can, you know, download the sermons. You know, so so many uh, avenues of ministry that can uh, actually be done um, free. Um but yeah, I see that now. You know, you want to you want to purchase sermons. You got to buy it. They got uh, you know uh, to the point where um, you know so you buying a, a, a whole series of messages for eighty dollars, fifty dollars, and all of this when they could you know clearly give it away free. Now I just want to just go into the Word of God and hit on certain things. And again, this is a discussion. Feel free to comment your opinion and let me know what you think but I feel as if we should uh, this is something that we should discuss and really uh, shed light on to see what the Word of God says now let me say this please step out of your um, your 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 your, your church <laughs> uh, mind philosophy and let's just get into the Word of God clear your mind of where how you was brought up and what your pastor did and you know just or this certain pastor who you really admire or you really like just because they do it you feel as if that's right no don't think like that don't think like that let the word of god speak to you and let's just see what god has to say so the first place you know i i i went to is matthew 10 um matthew chapter 10 verse 8 and look what it says he's he actually uh jesus is Commissioning his disciples, he's sending them out. Actually, let's start at verse 5. It says, These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go into the way, I'm sorry, go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So he's telling them to go preach the word. Now watch verse 8. Heal the sick. Cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Freely you have received. All the revelation that 
if, if you are, you know, you, um, the, uh, your pastor or, or minister or whatever, you know, all the revelation that God has given you, the salvation that God has given you, the, the Holy Spirit God has given you, this was a f freely given. He purchased this. So he's saying in return, freely you have received, you've received salvation, you've received revelation, you've received the power to be able to reveal the word of God to, uh, to others. Freely you have received, freely give. Clear, 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 clear cut to the point. There's no deep revelation about that. Freely you have received, freely give. But you don't see that. Now, you got to buy it. You got to buy the word, you know. You got to send in what they call donations. <laughs> For a generous donation of such and such, we'll send you this sermon. It's crazy. All right, Matthew 21, verse 12. Go to Matthew 21, verse 12. Okay, now look what this says. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said to them, it is written, my house should be a house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Now, at this point, you know, now they were selling um, because, you know, they would have to go to the temple to uh, to sacrifice the different animals and those types of things. Um and, you know, Jesus saw this going on and he got extremely upset because they were selling and buying, you know, uh, in the t in, in the house of God, making a profit from the people. Jesus got mad. He said, this is supposed to be a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. Now, just imagine what do you think Jesus would say about today? They're not selling doves, but they're selling literally the word of God. <laughs> they're selling the revelation that God has given them. They're selling um, the word, sermons, selling them when they don't have to sell them. You don't, you don't, you don't have to sell the sermon. I mean, you know, I mean, you, you can't say that you have to sell it so that you can continue to... Um, pay the bills in the church. I mean, if you have to go out and preach to just one person, you know, I mean, you know, even if they take away the building, uh, the four wall building, <laughs> you know, you can go outside and preach. You can preach on YouTube. There's so many different avenues of reaching people, but it's like people are not wanting to realize that and notice that and recognize that. Um, it's like people are blinded from that fact. So nowadays, we're selling sermons, and people don't talk about it. You know, you really don't even hear people discuss it. Like, it ain't nothing. Like, it's, I guess it's so common. It's so common practice that it's, uh, no one says anything about it. Just like, again, with, like I was saying, as far as these conferences and things like that, uh, you know, I'm like, dang, you know, nobody is saying nothing about it. You know, and I'm like, wow, don't they see this uh, as being a problem? But... Nobody's saying anything about it because it's we're lured asleep. And every time there's that compromise, it seems as if it continues to grow and grow and grow. I mean, even just look at today now. You know, you have, um, you know, gay churches where, um, you know, uh, they support um, gay marriage and the, where the pastor is gay or whatever the case is. Uh, you actually have churches that do that. You know, you think, well, how how is that? How did that come to pass? Well, it's because when people gradually compromise the word of God, uh, when you gradually compromise it, uh, darkness or deception increases to the point where people are deceived because they stray away from the truth of God's word to just fitting their desires. That sounds like scripture. Didn't Tim, uh, Paul say that that was going to happen? Second Timothy, uh, you know, for a time will come where they will not endure sound doctrine. You know, we're at that time. Okay, let's go to First uh, Timothy chapter six. 
And I think, you know, like I say, I, I mean, this is real important to really uh, take heed in, you know, because it, it's, you have to recognize the times that we're living in, the days that we're in, um, and understand that, you know, this is the time where we really have to be alert, you know. And then you think about the different doctrines that you hear today. I mean, you have doctrines nowadays that people people relate your relationship with God or your standing with God based upon material wealth. You know, I mean, you you know, so now it's like uh, when God when God blesses you with something, um, it's seen because you you know you got a new car, you got a new house, um, you got a new uh, you got a husband, you got a wife, or wherever the case is. Um, it seems as if the the uh, the I guess the standard of God expressing Himself in a person's life is material things, and that's not the case. The main thing that you know, like even in the Bible with the apostles, the, you know, I mean, Paul was in prison. You know, he was encouraging people that was free when he was the one in prison, actually facing death. But he, but he had so much um, wealth spiritually. You know, the thing that he had that was uh, above material wealth was the presence of God, the revelation of God, the love of God. Those were things that were cherished. Those were the things that uh, signified that God was with him. Uh, not because, you know, he, you know, had a house or a chariot with you know, strong horses or whatever it you know, was back in, back in the day. But it was just his relationship uh, with the Lord. And that is what, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's precious. But you don't see that nowadays. I mean, just look at, okay, 1 Timothy uh, chapter 6. You go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. Let's read verse 5. Okay. Okay. But godliness, okay, I'm sorry, let's, let's, let's go this, let's go, um, verse uh, five, uh, four. He is proud, knowing nothing, but dotting about questions and strifes of words, where, whereof committed envy, strife, railings, evil uh, sermons, uh, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Watch what it says. But godliness with contentment is great gain. So again, um, you know, like, like I say, it's, it's very important to understand that, you know, it's not necessarily with material things. You know, you want to make sure that, you know, that you're, you're, that you're seeking the presence of God. You're seeking righteousness. You know, the thing that Jesus said to pursue, he said, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. So he's letting us know what we should thirst after or what we should seek is righteousness or the things of God. Uh, this is very uh, important to understand because I see like nowadays things are really just shifting. It's like it's like. It's just, I mean, it's just getting, just getting out of control, you know, so. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 3. Because um, we're clearly in the last day church. And it's, uh, you know, we have to stay alert. We have to stay aware of what's going on. And please, people, and I, I can't emphasize this enough, stay in your words stay reading the bible and studying the bible study the word of god yes listen to your pastor yes listen to uh the word of god but you need to study as well if you can't read i mean they have bible audio you know where you can actually just hear the word being spoken or read you know but there's so many different avenues that you have to study the word of God. So make sure that you do study the word of God. So you'll be able to discern um, truth of the word of God. But if you go to Revelations 
chapter 3, uh, verse 14. And it says, And unto the angel of the church of the Landesians write, These things saith the Amen, saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of creation of God. I know thou works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Watch what he says. And this is the last church, because he described all of these churches, and this was the last church that he described, which I believe is the church age. And this is the last church age that I believe that we're in. Now watch what he said in verse 17. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. Saying that they, okay, now listen to what he says. He said that they were, they're saying that they're rich because they're increased with goods. In other words, they, that this church age was feeling that they had no need of anything because they had material things. You know, so what they were saying was based upon what they had, I guess, material wise, that equal to where they were in their relationship with God. And the reality was they were poor, wretched <laughs> and blind in God's eye. But they felt as if they were well off because they had all of these things. We're living in that day and age. To the point where where we have begotten where we have gotten so blinded to the point where we feel as as if it's okay to charge two hundred dollars for a gospel conference. We feel as if it's okay to sell sermons. We feel as if it's okay to you know just 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 merchandise the things of God. He said, freely you have received, freely give. I, you know, me personally, I, I, I just see it. And it seems as if it's not a lot of discussion about this particular topic. Um, but like I say, you know, to, to, to those that are seeking truth, to those that are uh, wanting to just, uh, you know, seek God in, in all honesty and all truth. Um, you know, just stay in your word, study the word of God and, um, you know, continue to share the gospel. Uh, continue to live right. Um, and, you know, and just, just stay in the word and keep praying. But, um, yeah, just go ahead and comment on, on, on this topic. Uh, let me know what you think. God bless. Peace.